good Edinburgh, baby. What is up? Here's which boy, Millsy. Back with Hometown Commander. Back for another episode of Millsy Brews, the show where I brew my version 1.0 deck list of the commander in front of us on my quest to brew a magic world. And there's always the deck list that's going to be down in the description below. If you like content like this and you want to see more, please give me a like, uh, comment, and subscribe if that's something you want to do. Uh, we post decks almost every day during the, during the week, if not uh, four times a week. And we've got plenty more new content coming. We're finishing up OTJ over the next week or two. We've got some random brews coming. And then we're jumping into Modern Horizons 3, and I cannot wait. Today we're talking about and a Demir commander, Satoru the Infiltrator. So, got another part of um, Oko's Merry Band of Villains uh, helping him out. We have a 2 mana 2 3 ninja uh, human rogue. As a menace, and whenever Satoru and or one or more non-token creatures enter the battlefield under your control, if none of them were cast or no, or no mana was spent to cast them, draw a card. So it's an interesting ability, you know, where we're, we're, I feel like Satoru's kind of um, really hinting at, two th at really three things. The ninjutsu style of play, uh, blinking creatures or reanimating creatures, you know, or just cheating them in, in general. I feel like Satoru's going to reward us for getting creatures in for cheap, you know, for free. Through plenty of ways, depending on what we choose to, you know, how we do it. The cool part about Ninjutsu is it's an ability, so it's not considered to be a cast, so it's going to draw us a card. There's plenty of other ways you can do this. I've tried to build the deck pretty well rounded at that, and we're just going to see what we can accomplish. Well, to set up our Ninjutsu, um, we're going to need some cheap unblockable creatures to do it, and in our color combo, we have some great ones. Kaito Shizuki can make those 1 1 ninjas that can't be blocked. Changeling Outcast and uh, Demir Infiltrator both can't be blocked, and they're pretty cheap to keep bringing back in, so we can do it again and again. Same thing with Miss uh, Miscloaked Herald, Slither Blade, and Train Server Stalker. So again, just some of these cheap one, two mana creatures that can't be blocked, or one or two mana creatures with evasion, things like Flying and Skulk in the deck. So if we want to take the ninja, want to you know, since we're leaning a teeny bit more to the ninjutsu route, um, we'll have things that we can ninjutsu onto. As far as the ninjutsus go, well. We want to play as many of them as we can, because again, even though we're paying for them, this is an ability, not a cast. So these are all going to draw off Satoru. Fallen Shinobi, probably one of the more popular ones. When it does combat damage to a player, that player exiles the top two of their library, and until end of turn, you can play those cards without paying their mana costs. Nashi, when it hits, that player exiles the top card, or sorry, exiles the top card of each player's library. Until end of turn, we can play one of them, and, and we can pay life instead of its uh, mana for it. And Izumi Prowler, when it comes in, can give a creature we control death, touch, and lifelink. Orochi Soul Reaver from the Commander decks uh, makes treasure and manifests the top card of that, that player's library. Sakushima Student can come in as a copy of any creature on the battlefield except the ninja. Silent Blade Oni can get a spell from our opponent's hand and... Um, Cast it for free, so if our master gives a buff to all of our other ninjas and rogues, Thousand Face Shadow can come in and create a token of a copy of another target attacking creature, so that's pretty great um, for getting more of these unblockables uh, down and getting more of them so we can ninjutsu them. And then, of course, Yuriko. Anytime you're talking about ninjas, Yuriko is always going to come up. Yuriko is great at what it does, revealing that top card and dealing uh, some life to our opponent. So, this is just nine of the many ninjutsu creatures we have in the deck. Um, it is important, and I want to make sure we talk about it because it is a big part of it. The other half of the deck is finding ways to cheat in, blink, reanimate, whatever we can do to get creatures in for no cost. Displacer Kitten can blink a um, non-land permanent every time we cast a non-creature spell. This is great because we can be blinking things and getting draws from um, Satoru as much as we can. Fibblethip can allow us to plot cards in the top of our library, which is pretty great, because then we can pay nothing for that plot, right? Um, and uh, nothing for the plot when we, you know, we, we, we pay to plot it, but when we go to but when we go to cast it from the plot, uh, it's free, and that will draw a card. Persist for a little bit of reanimate action. It kind of sits alongside cards like reanimate in the deck to get creatures back out of our graveyard. And again, count for Taurus Trigger Essence Flux and a couple other uh, cards here for a little bit of blink. Exiling creature and bringing it back. That'll count as it coming in not have been cast and give us some card draw. Feign death and not dead after all. Play a... Uh, are a good example of a couple of these cards where it says when a creature dies, it comes back in under its owner's control. That'll, of course, draw us off Satoru, Planar Incision, and Teferi's Time Twist doing something very similar to um, 
Essence Flux, just blinking a creature. This can be used to do a lot of things, save a creature from removal, or just get us that draw when we need it. But it's not just that. We have things like Crypticote from Mirza Karlov Manor to um, cloak the top card of our library, so that'll come, count as a creature coming in and get us a draw. Um, and then we can return to its hand and keep keep that party going. Scroll of Fate can manifest a card from our hand every turn. Again, getting a draw from Satoru. Key to the Vault, whenever that creature hits, we get to cast a spell, and if that spell's a creature, then that's going to come in without being, you know, being paid for. That's going to give us a draw. As you can see, we're trying to just get a bunch of these cards that allow us to uh, cheating creatures, or blink creatures, or animate creatures, or, or, or ninjutsu. Just these, try to find as many free ways as we can to get creatures to so draw through, draw through, draw through, and just keep getting value so we can push in uh, through our opponents. So I think Satoru is a better ninjutsu commander than Tigiriko, of course not. But I think the difference is if we can find some of these pet ways we love to do this cheating of, of other costs, I think we can find a fun way to make the deck uh, happen and make it really punishing for our opponents. But I've said on the show before, and I'll say it again, no deck's ever done. This is my version 1.0 of the deck, and I'm sure I missed some things, but these were three cards that almost made the cut that I wanted to make the cut. Jace Reawakened seems really fun as a Planeswalker. You can plus one to exile a non-land card with mana value three or less from your hand and plot it. This could be really helpful for us to, um, you know, use one of our cheap unblockable creatures to ninjutsu and then plot it with Jace to make it free the next turn or, you know, whatever we could do or or just as many, you know, of our small creatures just plot them, allow them to come in for free. Ghostly Flicker to do a little bit of blink and then Bridge to Multiverse just to be a fun finisher to get a bunch of our opponent's things and get some value. I think there's a lot of ways we can take this deck and I've tried my best to probably a little bit more well-rounded, which could potentially be a detriment depending on what you think you want out of Satoru. Uh, but I just tried my best, and I think that's what makes a great starting point for a deck is understanding where you could be and going from there. But we keep a two-lander with a soul ring, which ain't never a bad thing. We'll draw for turn one and get that fetid pools down. So there's, we could, you know, island in the soul ring, but we don't have the black source to get Satoru down. I guess we could have gotten something else down. Uh, but I don't mind that for turn one. Turn two, we'll get the um, island down. And I guess I'm realizing that we are now, you know, we could play Satoru or we could get something, um, you know, get something like this plotted, which is probably, well, we have the ninjutsu set up. We could ninjutsu and Satoru next turn. So maybe we play the Herald here and the Soul Ring. Uh, and then we should be able to Satoru. Oh, we need another black source. Does that change my line? Use the blue into this. Yeah, I think I'll just get the Herald done. I, I think I might have missed something there, but we'll, we'll keep it rocking. Turn three, another blue starts. Yeah, we need two black to be able to ninjutsu, but thankfully we drew into a blue ninjutsu there, so we can get Sidoro down for two, um, get in a combat attack with the Herald, and go ahead and ninjutsu in um, Moon Hacker, which will draw us a card. And it says, uh, when it just comes to a player, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card unless it enters the battlefield this turn. Well, it did, so it's just going to allow us to draw another card. Get us up more on uh, that good stuff. So, let's see. It was two for Satoru, one for that. So we just had two mana left. Nothing I think we can do on uh, our main two. So we'll draw for an extra Dorothy, Dorothy Voidwalker. is kind of fun, but again, missing that extra black. So I think what I would probably do here is set up another ninjutsu. Maybe Satoru has an attack somewhere, but then again, we want it to be down. I like the idea of getting the Herald back down. That leaves um, four more mana. We could scroll a fate. We could leave up something like Reality Shift and uh, just pass it back to our opponents. Leave up the Essence Flux to try to blink something as well if we wanted to. Hmm. I'm not sure. I think what I would probably do is. Um, Try to sneak an attack with like Satoru if we can, or here if we can. But otherwise, I'd just keep the reality shift up, probably see what our opponents are doing. I, I get the argument for probably Scroll of Fate here, right? Because 
Let's see, we had four mana left. Scroll of Fate, tap it immediately to maybe Shadow put this in. Um, as a 2-2, two -two and that draws us a card. Right, because a creature came in and we didn't pay any mana for it. That one I think would probably make more sense, right? And then we would draw for our next turn, get our land down. So now we're at six mana rogue class. It was pretty good, but I kind of like the idea of just trying to ninja to this turn. Maybe we plot this away. Move to combat, get the Herald in it, somebody, and, you know, Ninjutsu in, uh, you know, maybe like Silver for Master to draw a card. And I think here we're just trying to keep, you know, Rogue Class is a great way to get in there, start stealing our opponent's things. I like this idea of just continuing to replay these, you know, these cheap creatures back down, get them in, Ninjutsu things in. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where my end game would be at this point, but I feel like we're running down that route, and it would just be going from there on finding uh, a way to push that guy in. Here we're keeping a five lander, which is very odd in Demir, so I think we're going to give it a go. Got a couple tap lands, so we'll just get one of them in. Well, I think all of our colors are tapped, aren't they? So we'll get Sunken Hollow in. Uh... Turn two, we see an island. I think then we'll get Satoru down. Turn three, we'll get another land in. And let's see. I guess we'll get the Infiltrator in, right? Get it down, getting ready to attack next turn. Maybe attack with Satoru somewhere if we have a nice free attack. Either of these come in tap no matter what. So we'll throw one of them down. And here, I would just go ahead and attack him with that Infiltrator, pop it to our hand, put down the uh, Hacker uh, that would draw from Satoru, which will um, draw from the Hacker, and then we can play, what, that was one mana, we have two mana left, uh, probably put that Infiltrator back down, get that ready to go. Next turn, we have five mana now, untapped land. We get Slither Blade in. Maybe we put this on like the hacker to start um, getting some value from that, from the flying. Uh, odd, I don't think I have anything good here as far as getting a draw, but we just tack in. Maybe the operative draws us a card. We would have to pitch a card again because it didn't come in this turn, which is perfectly okay. Now we see Cunning Evasion, so when a creature gets blocked, we can put it back to our hand. Get it down, uh, get Miss Cloak down, and I would just probably hold up this Essence Flux maybe to blink something, try to get Hacker in again. Again, draw and pitch. And I think here again, we're just looking for, man, these, both these, both these playtests are really bad, guys. I'm sorry, I feel like uh, I should have seen more, but that's okay. Maybe the deck needs a few more good end game pieces, and that's something where uh, we're not always going to hit on every time. But I think you get the premise, you get the understanding of what the deck's trying to go, and maybe you just can take the the deck and build in your favorite ways to end in the, in the game. But let me know what do you think of Store down in the comment section below, and I will catch you guys next time.